Welcome back, Met fans, and welcome back, baseball fans. Today, we have a phenomenal video about a phenomenal player, a phenomenal prospect, and that name is Ronnie Mauricio. Ronnie has been doing amazing things in his first couple games in spring. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at Ronnie from last year, a scouting report from 2021, and we're going to see how this guy has improved dramatically in just one year and what that means for him going forward. We're also going to look at a player or two of what, who Ronnie Mauricio compares to, and I think that's going to be very interesting for you Met fans. First, I want to say thank you for watching all our videos. Please, if you are diehard Met fans, hit that like button, subscribe, because we have a lot of content for diehard Met fans. Again, thank you so much for all your support. Okay, so getting into it, that 2021 scouting report is extremely interesting. And I was just looking at this because we all know Ronnie Mauricio was a good prospect, but what the heck is making him great? And what has he changed in just one year? So last year, a scout by the name of Jeff Ponce did a report on Ronnie Maurizio. They said the guy, Ronnie, is 6'3", 166 pounds. He's a switch hitter. So right that then, and I'm just going to go point by point of how things have changed in a year. So in a year, we already see the body transformation of Ronnie going from 166 pounds to 220. So Ronnie has dedicated himself tremendously to getting in the gym, to getting bigger, putting on bulk, putting on size, and, and transforming his body into a major league body. So that is something that I give him all the credit in the world. Okay, so Jeff the Scout goes into his physical description of Ronnie. So the physical description is he's a tall, thin, broad-shouldered with room to add significant good weight, which he did already. A body type that can add 30 to 40 pounds of muscle without losing any significant athleticism. He did that already. He... So that I find fascinating. Okay, so that's his physical description. Now we go to the hit potential. So he's described as a switch hitter, similar setup for each side of the plate, open stand, sets his weight on his back leg, leg hip, similar setup to Curtis Grandison. He has a slight leg lift, trigger closes off his leg front side before taking a long linear, linear path to the ball. He is an aggressive swinger with above average bat to ball skills, but an unrefined approach. Swings at bad pitches and despite bat pad, still gets beat by elevated fastballs, leading to more pop-ups than you'd like to see. Young enough that his contact skills and control off his levers should lead to at least average contact. So they grade him out at a 50. Okay, so just in a year, this is 2021, I just want to read the stats. Jeff, the scout, basically says that he has a, a high ground ball rate and his his uh, fly ball rate is not that high. But just in one year, his ground ball rate went to, in 2022, went to his lowest in his career. It went all the way down to 43.8%. So Ronnie Mauricio, he's had his highs of 52% ground ball rate, but now bumped that all the way down to 43.8%. Now he's hitting the ball in the air 38.6% of the time, which is the highest in his career. So that's as of 2022. So that is great. Okay, so we go to the next stat category, and that is power. So Jeff the Scout writes, swing is geared toward line drives or going the opposite way and making plays with his legs. Best contact is hard liners to his pull side, and even his home runs tend to lack hang time. Likely can get to fringe average game power at peak with strength gains and loft he seems to have added over the last year okay so basically and i saw this from the stats he hits a lot of balls on a line which you're like that's not bad that's not bad but when ronnie was 160 pounds when he was hitting on a, on a line it was either at someone it was warning track power but now 
He's added that bulk. He's added that muscle. Even when he hits it on the line, when he hits it on the line, it's going to be a home run or it's going to be in the gap. So that is a good thing from the size he put on. Plus, his line drive rate has gone down and his fly ball rate has gone up. So that extra loft that Jeff Descott is speaking about is actually showing up now. He sh it showed up in the Dominican League. It showed up in spring training. And it also showed up at the end of the 2022 season. So that is actually a great thing. Okay, so we'll go on to the next uh, category by Jeff the Scout. So Jeff the Scout talks about the field category, uh, his defense. So he writes, average defender at the shortstop position. Not the most rangy player, but clean infield actions and good hands should allow him to stick in the infield. Ability and arm will translate at third base even if his offensive profile may not. Stronger moving left than to his right. Okay, so they give him a grade to his 50 and they say that he's stronger moving to left than he is to his right. So, I mean, if you're playing third baseman and if you play towards the line, you only have to move towards your left. So, I mean, I think that's good if we move end up moving him to third base. Okay, um, defense is something that Ronnie has to move on. That's actually one of the biggest opportunities. Ronnie last year made 25 errors, which was the highest of his career. But we see how much Ronnie works and how much he wants to be in the big leagues. So he got a grade of a 50, and it is true. He does need to work on his defense. Now the next category that Jeff the Scout goes over is his arm. He writes, Ronnie has a plus arm with the ability to let loose a rocket. Throws from deep in the hole, consistently on time and accurate. Shows the ability to slow down and gather himself. Rarely being forced into errant throws. Mauricio's best tool. Okay, now that is actually pretty good. If we're going to move him to the outfield, it's good to know that he has a strong and accurate arm. They actually graded him out as a 60. So now I know why those... Um, those uh, things we're hearing about him moving to the outfield are true because we see he has the ability to do that. Okay, now the run category that Jeff the Scout write, writes about. And he goes, Ronnie has above average runner. He is an above average runner down the line with below average instincts on the bases. He is a poor base stealer and lackadaisical at times. It's still an element of his game that works on shots down the line where he still has long strides and hustle can stretch some singles into doubles. Okay, so this is a 2021 scouting report. I just want to let you know in 2022, Ronnie Mauricio stole 20, 20 bases. That is actually the highest in his career. Um, in 2019, just so you know, he only stole six bases. So he actually more than tripled that total. So this is an older report, old, a year, year and a half old. But it's just telling you that Ronnie has worked on a lot of areas of his weakness. Now he's actually becoming into a bit of a base stealer. Instincts, they're saying he's lackadaisical. They're saying that he has below average instinct. These are things that can be worked on. If you're lackadaisical, you can work on that. If you have below average instincts, if somebody's saying that about you, over time you get more confident and you improve. And it's looking like he is becoming more of that five-tool player. He could throw, he could run, he can hit, and he has to work on his defense to get there. Okay, so Jeff the Scout writes overall, a heavily hyped young shortstop with a big bonus dollar attached. Mauricio isn't the star many believed him to be, but he is a solid all-around player with tools that garner an everyday role. Unlikely to be a star, Mauricio will hit for a solid average with mid-teen power. Possibly enough strength to eke out 20 or so in his best season. I think he falls more into the range of a Dansby Swanson log term than say a Xander Bogarts. He has shown the ability to play it. An average shortstop and his arm, his strong arm, makes up for his lack of range. Average everyday starter. Okay, 
So in this scouting report, in the overall uh, concept, they're saying that he could be a team power guy. So this is well before he put on his bulk, he put on his mass, and before he slugged 26 home runs. So that evaluation right here is well outdated. So I... The reason why I wanted to do a 2021 scouting report is I wanted everybody to observe how much improvement Mauricio made in just one season or one and a half seasons. So that really gives me the uh, the inclination and the knowledge to know that this guy has the potential to be a superstar and an every day and every year consistent all-star because you know what? For you to be successful, it's not only your talent, it's not only your skill. You have to have the right attitude, you have the right approach, you have to have the right drive. And it looks like not only does he have the physical abilities, but he has the mental makeup. And that's actually what what scouts, it's hard for scouts to see. A lot of times they'll interview the family, they'll see what type of extracurricular activities the person does. They'll, they'll um, interview uh, you know, teachers. they try to get to know the person because that really tells you, this is, is this guy gonna be a hard worker? How's he gonna be in five years when he gets paid? Or 10 years when he's getting a little older? You want a good character guy and it looks like Ronnie Mauricio is gonna be that full package. Now, what I did is I promised you a player comparison. And a player, I actually have two player comparisons. One is a little out there, but one is actually pretty accurate. And this guy is Alfonso Soriano. Alfonso Soriano has slugged over 400 career home runs, he has stolen a, quite a few bases. But he wasn't always the highest on base guy, and he wasn't always the best defender. That is right now where I see Ronnie Mauricio, uh, somebody in that type of mold, a guy who can hit um, that type of power, hit for that type of power, and a guy who has that type of longevity. He is showing his body. You know, when you build mass, you're going to be able to be durable. He has a big frame, as shown, and he's a guy who works hard at his craft. So that is one player comparison I see. And a guy who I was thinking of, I'm like, you know what? Who he kind of reminds me of, switch hitter, maybe moving to the outfield, showing power. Um, and here's the thing. His on base is 296, and his average last year in 2022 was 259. So this is where I kind of veered away from this player. But I was actually thinking of a young Carlos Beltran. But when I looked at Carlos's numbers when he was uh, a young player for the Kansas City Royals, and also in 97, 98 when he was in the minor leagues, he actually hit for he actually hit for average. He was uh, a 310 average in the uh, in the minor leagues, and his on base was close to 400. So I mean, Carlos. It looks like Carlos Beltran was a Hall of Famer from start to finish. So I thought that was actually a phenomenal stat. It didn't turn out to line up exactly with Mauricio. But if Mauricio works on his on base, if he works on his um, um, eye at the plate, if he's not as uh, as aggressive as he is right now or as he was last season and the seasons before that, he can attain that type of level. And that's actually the player that I would like him to be. And why not? Okay, it's that Alfonso Soriano's not a bad player also. He's made a lot of All-Star players. He he was traded for Alex Rodriguez after all. So we all know he had all the talent in the world. All right. I want to know, what do you think, Met fans? What do you think? Is he going to be a perennial All-Star? Who does he remind you of? How excited are you about Ronnie Mauricio? Because we have a whole ton of great prospects. And this is the guy whose heads and shoulders right now in spring training above everybody else. So those are my thoughts. That's what I'm excited about. What are you excited about? Again, please, please, if you're a Met fan, uh, if you want to support the channel, please do, do that good deed and uh, like this video, subscribe. I got a lot of great co content coming, and I want you to be a part of it. Thank you so much again for your support, and let's go Mets.